All right, good morning, everybody. Happy, happy Wednesday, September 8th. We're here for my intro to psychology classes. Um, I see all of you putting your names in the chat, which is fantastic. Uh, can you hear me and see me okay? My microphone is moving, so I think it's okay, and I can see my video up, but uh, let me know if you can hear me and see me all right before we keep going. Perfect. All right. I'm getting lots of yeses. So that is, uh, that's perfect. Loud and clear. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, I hope everyone had a wonderful four day weekend. It was so nice to have four days though. Uh, that made it a little hard to get up this morning. I'm sure I'm not, I'm sure I'm not alone on that, but, uh, it's very exciting. Tomorrow is the first day of football. So I am, I am ready for this week, <laughs> ready to go. Very excited that uh, we get some football coming back tomorrow and it's a short week so we just have today tomorrow and Friday and then it is another weekend so hopefully those are all good things and everybody's feeling uh, nice and, and rested as much as as we can uh, I want to do a couple of things today usual format in that I will uh, go over a few things from last week uh, when we were talking about chapter three I'll give you some reminders for this week and uh, focusing specifically on our first exam. So we have exam number one this week and I wanna make sure you know where to take it and uh, give you some tips for uh, doing well on the exam as well. So we'll go over that and then I'll give you the extra credit question, of course, for today and see if there are any questions. So that is uh, the plan for, plan for today. So let's head over to Canvas together. And um, again, we are in week number four this week flying through the semester. Uh, we're almost like a fourth of the way through the semester after this week, which is just really hard to believe. It's going so fast. I feel like I say that every week, but it's going fast. Uh, last week for week number three, you were looking at biological psychology and overall pretty nicely done. Um, a few of you struggled a little bit with the discussion. Uh, so I want to talk just a little bit about that. So discussion number three for last week, uh, a couple of different things that you were doing. You were talking about what are neurons and why are they important? How do they communicate with each other? And then you were in charge of reading the article and describing the origins and beginnings of the 10% myth and some reasons why it is false. Now I hear this myth all the time. My mother-in-law, literally it was like three weeks ago, two weeks ago was like, if I could only access the other 90% of my brain, I'd be dangerous. <laughs> like you're already dangerous, right? Uh, I didn't say that, but uh, you know, it is a myth. It's a very commonly uh, thought to be true myth. So hopefully now you have a little bit more information about that. People did great for the most part on the 10% myth. Where I saw people struggle a little bit was on number two, talking about how neurons communicate with each other. And I was really looking for you to reference something having to do with that electrochemical communication, that there is an electrical and a chemical piece when neurons communicate with each other. That electrical piece is controlled by ions and the chemical piece controlled by neurotransmitters. Um, and so a bunch of you, I wrote, you know, I wanted a little bit more. I wish you would elaborate just a little bit more, but a lot of you were very close, um, earning like 11 or 12 out of 13 points on that part. Uh, I also saw quite a few people not responding to a peer. So I will continue to remind you to respond to one of your classmates to make sure that you get those two points. But for the most part, people did pretty well. I feel like you are settling in uh, to what you know. I want you to do for the discussions. I feel like a lot of you have kind of figured that out and uh, hopefully are feeling comfortable with them at this point. We will do a discussion every single week. So um, you, know, you can expect these throughout the semester. And don't forget to respond to a peer. Again, those two points uh, will add up and you can counter them with these Twitch extra credits, uh, but you definitely wanna be earning them and they're kind of an easy two points. So make sure that you are responding to one of your classmates every week. So this week we move into uh, week number four and week number four, we're looking at the topic of sensation and perception. Kind of a fun one, lots of uh, illusions and like color after images and different effects that can happen uh, when it comes to sensation and perception. So for this week, uh, you have kind of your usual format, but we have one new thing this week. We have that first exam. 
And so you'll take four tests in this class. They'll happen every four weeks. And I think that is way nicer than having just one or two big ones uh, because they're a little bit more condensed into topics. So this test is on chapters one through four. And then the next one will be on five through eight. Right. So each one is on four chapters from that unit. So we'll get there more in a second. Uh, make sure for this week that you're reading chapter four in the ebook uh, like you would always. And then you're going to want to uh, read through the lecture and watch the lecture video. So the lecture for this week, right, the American flag thing is fun. It's kind of an old um, standby one, but it's such a, it's, it's the moment when you see it flash is, is always kind of fun. So uh, here's the summary. And again, you can listen to it if you want, or you can read it. There's some beyond the book stuff. Um, I found kind of a fun video on subliminal perception. There's a lot of uh, very like sexual examples in here, uh, but a lot of examples that are, are kind of scandalous of things that are very subliminal. There's a, a tour of the eye. There's these little stereograms. I don't know if any of you have um, ever seen these. I used to have a couple of these in my room uh, when I was younger and I was so bad at seeing them where you find the hidden image uh, inside of it. Here's the video on color after images where you can uh, put the fish in the bowl and the bird in the cage and, and you definitely get the flag uh, that you just mentioned. Make sure to watch that. Uh, it will be really helpful for understanding that concept, which will definitely be on the exam. And then here's a little bit more about the stereograms and how to view them and some more examples online. In pop culture, looking at a couple of examples of how these things show up, uh, rods and cones, uh, years ago, I saw Blue Man Group in Vegas, and they had a little skit on rods and cones, and I found it and shared it with you. Uh, here's a song about never experiencing pain again. Lots of movies featuring uh, topics related to the senses or ESP. I almost said ESPN, but I didn't. ESP. And then a great example from the movie Ghostbusters, uh, where you have a little ESP experiment. Here are the key terms and review. Here are all the terms that you need to know from chapter four for the exam. And then on the last page of the application. So now that I've read this, you know, how could I apply this knowledge? There's a little bit about smell and memories, which is something you'll be looking at in the discussion for this week, coping with pain and illusions. So um, lots of different topics, kind of a, I think kind of a fun, chapter in the sense that there's a lot of things to bombard your senses with. So I hope that you explore all of those links and click on everything and watch all the videos so that you can uh, properly be bombarded by all of the things that I provided for you. Don't forget as well to also watch the lecture video. So in the lecture video, um, I have a link here to a, a Zoom recording. So you can click on that and watch it. I'll go through the PowerPoint slides in that video. Um, and so what you'll want to do is watch that. You could take notes on it or just know that you could watch it uh, again if you needed access to it. But the video is all about uh, the different things from this chapter. So again, I went through the slides and uh, went through that for you in detail. So make sure that you watch that as well. And then once you're done with those things, once you've read the book and you have watched the lecture video and read through the lecture, then you'll want to do discussion number four. Okay, let's see. I recall my parents also went to a Blue Man Group show in Vegas, but the only thing I remember them saying was something about now shake your tech. That's funny, right? Um, I, I remember the rods and cones and then the toilet paper at the end, right? That they had uh, rolls of toilet paper going through, and I kept thinking, uh, you know, that my kids would, would absolutely love that one day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, to each their own, right? It's a very funny little skit. But they had something about rods and cones, which I thought was kind of fun and, and helpful. So for um, discussion number four for this week, uh, you are going to be reading an article on smell and memory. So I have a couple of articles posted in here that I think are, are they're very short, very accessible. So if you click on this, it will bring those up for you. Uh, you can listen to me reading it to you or read it yourself. But there's one here about how smell works. Uh, and then um, the nose and emotional time machine. So just two different articles um, saying essentially some of the same stuff, but in different ways. Reading about how smell and memory are very connected to each other. Um, and this is kind of a theme that you'll be looking at quite a bit this week. Um, and then what I want you to do is you're gonna do a little activity. So you're gonna read these articles 
And then I want you to gather some items that have like a distinct smell to them. Any like uncommon items of your choosing. So I said you could pick some common stuff like cinnamon or chocolate or a candle, grass, dirt, crayons, Play-Doh, whatever, whatever is like easy and around your house. And then try and pick some things that are kind of uncommon. And what I want you to do is take a moment with each thing that you gather and close your eyes and smell that item. Right? Uh, try and clear your mind of distractions. Take your time. What does it remind you of? What are the associations that come up? And I have to tell you, so yesterday uh, my wife was making a like moon wreath because she's seen them all over TikTok recently. And so she was making one for herself and she had moss, like um, craft moss out. And the smell of that moss always reminds me of our like spooky town Halloween village that we made. Because for years and years, we'd always pull that out right around now, uh, or in August, <laughs> and we would make this huge village, and the smell of that moss instantly reminded me of that village and reminded me of Halloween. Uh, a candle might remind you of a specific holiday. The smell of wet grass might remind you of Sunday mornings or Saturday mornings playing soccer games or soccer practice. So what I want you to do is uh, smell a bunch of different items, and then you're going to talk about... Did you experience any memories or associations? What did you respond to the most or least? Are there any other things that you tried or might consider trying? Uh, and then what are smell memories and how do they occur? And you're gonna be linking that to the knowledge from the articles. So show off that you read them and understood them. And then how can you use the knowledge that there's a strong relationship between smells and memory in your personal life? So looking for a, an application of how this might help you in some way. And I want you to be specific, right? Don't just say, now I know that they're linked, right? But give me a specific application of how you could use that in your life in some way. So I hope you enjoy the chance to uh, kind of purposefully smell some items and see what they remind you of. And I will look forward to reading uh, whatever it is that you uh, experimented with. And then the last thing for this week, as I said, is we have our first exam and so I want to take the rest of our time today to talk a little bit about the test where to find it how to take it how to prepare uh, before I get there though any questions so far any questions comments thoughts anything um, about the other stuff for this week before we we talk more about the exam I give you just a second to get caught up with that Okay. You're trying to take the practice exam, but it says it was expired. Um, so I can open that back up for you. It's the same as the uh, mandatory orientation quiz. So it was just uh, to practice with the format, but I will email uh, web support and see if they can open that back up if you wanted to try. So it's not going to help you with the content but just help you with the formatting of the test. So um, I will let them know that it's closed and see if I can get them to open that back up. Thank you for letting me, thank you for letting me know. So it's probably not that you're doing anything wrong. I think it just, uh, they closed it. So let me open that up for you. Um, I'll, I'll email them when we're done today. Would uncommon items to smell be anything that isn't food related or common to smell? Yeah, so I gave you a list of like common things like coffee, chocolate, you know, cinnamon, grass, like anything that is like easy and convenient. But uh, I'm looking around my house, I'm looking for inspiration. So like the moss I, example I gave you would be uncommon or uh, maybe um, like a type of soap or my cats are wandering around cat food, you know, just something that isn't on that list of like common things that I gave you. Really anything is fine, but think of if there's anything specific in your life right that might cause you to have like a, a smell memory or an association something that reminds you of something from the past thank you for asking uh thank you for asking questions i know i can't see you but i appreciate you asking and and being here with me live so thank you thank you for asking questions all right so let's talk about the exam right if you click on exam number one right here it will tell you you're going to take exam number one on the ebook page um, and so what you'll want to do is go directly to the ebook and I have a link here or I'm sure you've bookmarked it um, and saved it at this point. But if you go to the ebook page up here at the top, you'll click on exams. 
And this is where you took the mandatory orientation quiz. It's the same style and format, uh, but that practice quiz should be there for you. And again, I will um, ask them to open that back up for those of you who would like to, to try that. But the practice quiz is just, um, it's the mandatory orientation quiz again, just so you can kind of practice the format of saving and, and so on. But if you scroll down right here, exam instructions for exams one through four. So let's talk about these instructions for a moment before we get to the content of the test. So for the exams, you, you have 75 minutes to complete the exam. Okay, so 75 minutes. The second that you hit start, that clock is gonna start ticking down and you only get one attempt at the test. So make sure that you're ready and you're organized before you begin. So what I wanna see is that you're ready to go, you have good internet, you have a quiet space or as much as you can um, and you have planned for that 75 minutes. So you get that one attempt. So again, make sure you're ready and organized before you begin. You can use your notes, you can use your book, you can use the internet, you can use anything at your disposal. But I promise you, I promise you, and this is somewhat intentional, that if you're trying to look up every answer, you are going to run out of time. And I did that on purpose. Um, I've given this exam or some variation on it many, many, many times. And if you have studied and prepared, you will have plenty of time. If you're trying to look up every answer or understand each term so that you can answer the question, you're going to run out of time. So my biggest suggestion to you would be to make sure that you prepare for this test a little bit. Uh, study like you would for a regular in-person test and have your notes and book and everything there for you in case you can't remember something or in case you wanna double check an answer. But if you're trying to understand and look up every question, I promise you, your time will be very, very tight. And, uh, and again, that is a little bit intentional. So I'm just uh, warning you ahead of time that you are gonna wanna prepare and be organized and studied and ready to go. Um, as you take the exam, you need to save your answers. And I'll show you what this looks like again here in a second, but make sure that you're saving your answers to every question. And when you're done, you'll hit I am finished and it will give you a score instantly. Now remember, just like with that mandatory orientation quiz, the score won't be brought over to Canvas automatically. The score will be housed here in the ebook site and then when the, our weekly deadline passes, I will bring all the exam scores over. I wish that it did it automatically, but it doesn't. Uh, so when the week has ended, I will bring all of your scores into Canvas. So you will get a result right away, but it will only be on the ebook site until uh, we get to until we get to next week. So uh, when you're done, you know, click I am, I am finished and submit, you'll get that score. Uh, and remember that your test will be stopped when you run out of time. So make sure you're watching the clock, leave yourself plenty of time, definitely prepare. Um, and let's take a look at what saving it will, will look like. Um, there are no, um, some, a couple questions here. So all of the questions are either multiple choice, matching or true false. So there's no short answer questions. It's all multiple choice, matching, and true false. Um, there are, I believe, 70 something questions. You have roughly a minute per question, but the true false questions should be very quick. Um, obviously those ones are very fast. So if you don't know the answer to something, feel free to skip it and come back to it. Let's go to the practice exam. It should work on my end here um, or not. Here, we'll go to this one. So um, when you are taking the exam, Let's say you're ready, you're gonna hit start your attempt and it's gonna bring up the clock right here in the corner. Now I'm just showing you with the mandatory orientation quiz because it's the same format. But here's your little clock and so make sure you're watching the clock, be mindful of your time or you could obviously set a clock on something else if this isn't helpful for you. But there's gonna be a list of your questions right here at the top. Okay, and you'll notice if they're black, that means you haven't done them yet. So let's say I do this one. The best way to contact your instructors through email, and I would say true. And then you need to save your answer. If you don't save your answers, it won't record them. So that's a very important step. Please don't forget. Save your answer, and you'll notice once you've saved it, it turns it like that gold, orangish color. This class will be entirely online with no in-person meetings. True. Save answer. Right, so now I can see that I've done both of these and that they're orange. Now let's say I don't know the answer to this one. I can skip it 
and I can click on a different question, right? It'll show that it's gray. Well, gray means that you've opened it, but you haven't finished it. And you can, again, skip around all that you want. Just make sure before you're done that every single one that you've answered is that gold or orange color. And when you're all ready to submit, you'll hit I am finished and submit for a grade. Now it'll give you one more like, are you sure? Did you save everything? And I'll say yes. And the second that you're done and submit this, again, it will give you a score. So I scored a sad two out of 10. In all fairness, I only answered two, right? So 100%, <laughs> two points. Uh, but it'll give you an instant score and it'll show you the ones you got correct and the ones you got wrong. So you can take a look at that and kind of see and understand where you missed your points. But uh, that is how the kind of general format of the exam is going to go. Again, they are all multiple choice, true, false, or matching. And when you're ready, you will hit, you'll go down to exam number one and you'll hit begin your attempt. So 75 minutes, plan and pace yourself. If I could give you a couple of other suggestions, uh, don't wait until Sunday night, right? I put this in the syllabus. I will check my email up until about 8 p.m. on Sunday, uh, but don't wait until the last minute. Inevitably, when you wait till Sunday night, your internet's gonna crash, your computer isn't gonna work, the power will go out as we go into like the fall, we get all the wind and power outages. Please try and take this, you know, Friday, Saturday, take it early in the week. If you run into an issue with your internet or something happens, then you have time to reach out to me and we can fix it. If you take the exam at 11 o'clock on Sunday night and your internet crashes, I'm not going to get your email till Monday morning and it's going to be too late to fix it. So please, at the very, very latest and least, make sure you're done by 8 o'clock on Sunday. Um, after that, you're kind of taking it at your own risk. Again, um, other suggestions I would make, please try and prepare and study. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But if it were me, I would over prepare for the first exam. You don't know what to expect yet if you haven't taken a class with me before. So it might be a good idea to over prepare, over study, and then you can always dial it back a little bit for the next one if you did more than you needed to. So uh, make sure that you're ready to go, be organized and have everything set and clear. Um, try and make sure you have a good internet connection and as quiet and calm of a place to take it as you can. A few other things, I will never trick you on an exam, ever. There will never be a trick question. If something is unclear, you can always email me to ask or let me know after, but I will never trick you. I want you all to do well. Honestly, I think these exams are pretty easy. If you've been reading and you've studied, you will do fine. Um, they're very straightforward, they're very clear. I wrote all of the questions myself, so they're very catered to what we've covered. So as long as you're preparing, you should be in wonderful shape. So try not to stress too much, but definitely do take the time to prepare. Uh, let's go back to Canvas for a minute so I can show you one more thing. For every exam, I've given you a study guide and you can see it right here under week number four. Now remember, if you had started preparing early, that you can always get the terms from each lecture. So on that fourth page, I have all of the terms that you need to know for that chapter. All the study guide is, is me combining these together into one document. But uh, let's take a look at the study guide and just a few more comments here. So if you open study guide number one, and then let's make it big so you can see it. Anything on here, uh, okay, good. That, yeah, I'll have to take the test Friday because of the power outage issue lately. Yeah, as we get into the fall, inevitably, right, when those winds kick up we, and the fires that we're having in our state, um, there's always power and internet outages. Now, if all of us are out of power and internet for, <laughs> for the weekend, then, you know, then obviously I will adjust. But just try uh, and plan ahead. Inevitably, something goes wrong when you wait to the last minute. So just try and... Try and do it a little bit early if you can. That way, if you run into an issue, I can, I can help you through it. So the study guide, basically what I do is I make the exam. And the exams are based on the lecture and the ebook that I wrote um, and all of the videos and things that are in the discussions, all of the materials that you're covering. Once I've made the exam, I go through and I put all of the terms that are on the exam right here on the study guide. And so if it is on the study guide, it will be on the test. It's fair game for the exam. 
If it's not on here, you don't need to study it. You don't need to worry about it. So again, if it's on here, make sure that you know it and could answer questions about it. If it's not on here, let it go. You don't have to study it. It won't show up on the exam. So here are all the terms from chapter one, the terms from chapter two, three, and chapter four. So this exam is on chapters one, two, three, and four. Anything that is on here, make sure that you know it, understand it, and could ask questions or answer questions about it. So what I would do if it were me, and I'm one of those like kind of neurotic students who always got straight A's, so I over prepare for everything. Um, if it were me, what I would do is go through and write out or type out every single one of these terms. I would write them all out into a document and I would print it and I would have it right next to me during the exam. And that way what I know is I have every single term that could possibly be on the test right in front of me. I don't have to go search for it and try and find it. And then I would be studying those terms throughout the week, make sure I'm ready and, and all set to go. And then I would have it as a way to reference it during the exam. That's what I would do to prepare. Please feel free to do whatever works for you, but that is my probably my biggest suggestion. Make sure that you have written out, typed out, or maybe use something like Quizlet and have all of these different terms that you understand them and could answer questions about them. Um, there's also two diagrams on the second page. These two diagrams, you'll see them on the exam and you will be uh, labeling the different lobes and parts of the neuron that are on here. Now you'll be selecting them from like a multiple choice matching menu so you don't have to spell them or anything like that. But make sure that you know that these are the dendrites and the cell body that this is the myelin sheath, the axon, and the terminal buttons, right? Make sure that you could different label the different lobes um, of the brain, right? So make sure you've practiced a little bit with those, that you understand all of the terms that are on here. Again, if you're preparing and studying, this should be very simple, nothing tricky. It should be very obvious, and I really hope you all do well. I, I would be so happy if every single one of you got an A. That would make me, that would make me thrilled. So I hope that you do. I hope that you all get A's. And someone said, uh, yeah, Spectrum is killing you lately with internet out outages. Yeah, I have Spectrum as well, and it's been shameful. Uh, I don't know if other people are having that problem, but Spectrum has been so bad recently. Uh, my kids, all they do is complain, I can't get on Roblox, and Minecraft isn't working, <laughs> YouTube's not working. Um, Spectrum is is awful, but it's the only one that uh, we can get here at my house. We wanted to switch to like AT&T, which I've heard isn't any better, but we weren't wired for it. And so Spectrum it is, but it, um, it definitely isn't always consistent for sure. Um, right? <laughs> yeah, my kids are very upset at the very slow Minecraft <laughs> and Roblox speeds for sure. Um, yes, you will know your score immediately. So the minute that you submit the exam, as I mentioned, it will give you that score and it will show you the questions that you got right and wrong. If you ever have any questions about that, you're welcome to email me. Uh, but yes, it will show you that right away. Just remember that it doesn't bring it into Canvas. So uh, if you don't see your score in Canvas, as long as it's there on uh, the ebook site, you're in good shape. Okay. All right, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can answer. Are there any other questions about the exam? Again, the study guide is your friend. Prepare with it. The exam is on the ebook site. Make sure you're mindful of your time. Make sure you're mindful of, you know, not waiting till the last minute. Study, prepare. Those are all the, the big tips that I can think to give you. Of course, if you have questions, you can always email me. Um, I still have a couple things. I'll give you the extra credit question. Um, and some reminders really quickly, but any other any other exam related questions before before I uh, move on to the next thing? I'm gonna put this reminder here in the chat. I was gonna type our next stream date, but I had already typed this out. Don't forget to continue to check every week. We are four weeks in. What that means is a lot of you who subscribe for free, you're going to lose that subscription. Remember, it's only good for 30 days. So what you'll wanna do is go back onto Twitch uh, and resubscribe for free. Um, if you haven't done this yet, you can still do this at any point. Uh, it's really helpful for me. I can easily tell uh, who is on here who, when you're subscribed uh, and it also minimizes the ads and you can whisper to me. Uh, 
that sounded so you can whisper to me <laughs> you can send me a, um, like a private message is what that means but uh, make sure you're checking that every week if you look in the chat and you don't like all these people here if you don't have the little football cake or the crown next to your name that means you aren't subscribed anymore so please take a moment to check that every week um, if you can I would appreciate it and then um, our next twitch stream will be on Wednesday next week. So Wednesday 9, what, did, what was it? Wednesday 9.15. Wednesday 9.15 at 8.30 in the morning. So our next stream, next time I will see you all on here, will be Wednesday 9.15 at 8.30 in the morning. Let me give you the Twitch extra credit question for this week uh, so that you have a chance to earn those two points of extra credit. Um, so the extra credit question for this week, copy and paste it on here. Okay, so our extra credit question today is what is the difference between sensation and perception and give an example of each. So what is the difference between sensation and perception and give an example. So what you might do is define sensation, define perception, and then give an example. And it could be an example of how they work together how they work together or how they work separately, um, that's totally fine. But what is the difference between sensation and perception and give an example. Then you'll head over to Canvas and click on Twitch extra credit number four right here um, in week number four. And this is due by Sunday night like everything else. So you'll hit start assignment up here at the top and then you can type your response right here in the little box. And as soon as you're ready, hit submit, confetti burst, woohoo, right? Um, and that's how you will get those two points of extra credit. And you can always add to it later if you got it wrong or you want to add something else, you can hit new attempt. But um, those are the big things for this week. Um, double check your subscription status, study for the exam, make sure that you're set and ready to go, take the exam on the ebook site. Um, of course, read the lecture and the chapter, do the discussion, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, enjoy the first football games of the season. I am ready to uh, hopefully beat some of my family and my fantasy leagues and maybe win some money, uh, maybe win some money on a fan duel. It's my favorite way to obsess about fantasy football. But um, are there any other any other questions or comments or thoughts? Any? I'm gonna put that in the comments here. Any questions or thoughts, comments, anything before we before we call it a day? Anything I can answer for you? Yes, 49ers. I just read this morning that Garoppolo is the 49ers starter instead of Lance. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how long he plays before uh, before they put Lance in instead, right? Go Cowboys! Oh, boo, Moneyball, get out! <laughs> Go Brady! I got my I got my Tom Brady got my Tom Brady shirt on. I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready to go, right? Yeah, you could say go Patriots. I don't care as much anymore now that Brady's not there. But uh, I hope they they have a good year with with Mac Jones and anything's better than Cam Newton. So it's got to be it's got to be okay. <laughs> but uh, I hope it's a good weekend of football, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful week and weekend. Um, you know, try and relax and take care of yourselves as much as you as much as you can. Um, good luck on the exam. I root for the Bucks because uh, of Brady. So I followed Brady and Gronk over to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then I root for lots of players. I'm a huge Mahomes fan. We love him in our house because he eats uh, he eats ketchup. <laughs> he eats ketchup on everything. So we call him Ketchup Mahomes. Um, yeah, the Rams, they should have a good year with Stafford, right? So uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, hoping for a good football season. Yeah. Let's see, uh, so someone asked if we really struggle mentally with time test, is there any way for you to turn it off for certain people? So the only way that I can change the timing on your exam is if you have an access memo. So if any of you have a memo from access and you haven't sent it to me, make sure you do that ASAP. If you've never been um, tested or seen if you qualify, uh, nerd dog, you might wanna look into that. If you have extended test time, then I can provide that for you. But the only way I can do that is if you do have that official memo 
uh, from our access department. So I have all the information on, on the syllabus about their phone number. If you want to give them a call and look into it, that might not be a bad idea. Okay. Thank you as well. Have a wonderful rest of the day, wonderful rest of our short week. Uh, it's nice that it's a, a little shorter than normal. Uh, I'm going to minimize my video, but I will hang out for a little bit if you have any other questions. So again, um, good luck on the exam. You got this. You're going to do wonderfully. Have a great week. Of course, email me if you have any questions and I'll hang out for a bit if you do have any questions to ask me now. Thank you so much for being on here uh, with me live. Yeah, if you didn't type your name in, make sure you do that. Unless you're subscribed, then you don't have to worry about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being on here with me live. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful week. Thank you as well. Have a nice day. Have a wonderful week. Thank you as well. I'm still here if you have any questions. If you, uh, Nerd Dog, what you do is you could contact Access and ask them to email it to me. Or you can get a copy of it. It just has to make sure it says um, our current class information and everything. So what you might do is uh, email or call Access and ask them to send it to me. Yep, no problem.
All right, everyone, if you think of any other questions throughout the week, feel free to email me. Again, good luck on the exam, and I hope you have a, a decent week and that you're feeling rested. I will see you all next Wednesday morning for our week number five strength.